It is a momentous day as we welcome you to the first ever more digital vendor spotlight, bringing you the very best in insurance technology. It's such a momentous occasion. I've broken uh, lockdown etiquette. I've put a jacket on. I've even got trousers on. Um, and what a way to kick things off. We've managed to get hold of the best, a uh, man with the best hair in insurance, Peter Clark of InsuraCore. The future of insurance networking joins us. Peter, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure for both being my to be here. <laughs> so, Peter, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into insurance. Of course, yeah. So, I mean, my first job in insurance was working for a small MJ in my hometown at the age of 16. And you know, like most people, I came from a sort of pedigree of insurance. So my dad was in insurance, my brother, my cousin, uh, both ended up in insurance. So when leaving university, you come out and uh, you think, so what can I do? Where can I go? And uh, obviously insurance was uh, the easy option for me. So moved into uh, the London market, started in accident and health, working as an assistant underwriter, and then worked my way up and eventually moved across into construction engineering where I cut my teeth as a real London market underwriter uh, before obviously leaving to set up InsuraCore and uh, change the way in which we network in insurance. Fantastic. So you know the score for the uh, format for today. You're going to be asked five killer questions on your InsurTech offering, followed by a randomly generated quick fire round. So without further ado, let's give the people what they want, Peter. So question number one, in a hundred words or less, what do you do and how does it help brokers and MGAs? Of course. So InsuraCore was really set up with one purpose in mind, and that was to help brokers and underwriters communicate better around risk appetite and risks. So what we do is we allow MGAs, carriers and wholesale brokers to set up their products, uh, including their risk appetite, key facts, documents, etc., and make that available either via our search or push that out to brokers via our notification feed. So brokers are constantly kept away, aware of all the appetite that's out there in the market, who they can approach and who they should approach regarding sp uh, specific risks. In a nutshell, that's Fantastic. what we do. I was trying to desperately trying to count along for the hundred words, but I'm sure we'll put that in the bottom uh, bottom corner. I'm not sure so it was exact. It. But. <laughs> so, uh, question number two: What is the element of your offering of which you're most proud? I mean, for us, the fact that we can connect brokers to the capacity that they need within a matter of seconds has been brilliant. You know, we've had people come onto the platform looking for coverage for specific risks that their current uh, markets um, can't cater for. They've put in a search, they've sent out a message, they've got a response within minutes and started a conversation and taken that forward. So, I mean, for me, that's us proving concept. You know, we want you to be able to find out whatever risk your clients need, you can find the capacity for it within a heartbeat and start that conversation. Fantastic. And question three is, you know, what's the biggest success story you've had within your business so far? I mean, it's hard to go... We've been going for a long time now. It's, it's hard to pinpoint one, but for us, when we first set out, uh, there was a sort of a printed uh, directory that was going out to the market, um, and that was being sent out. Um, and we actually ended up getting a, um, a deal with Bieber. So that rather than sending out the directory, they'd actually send out login to our platform. Uh, and so for us, that gave access to one thousand two hundred brokerages across the UK. Um, so that was one one hell of an achievement for us um, to become that sort of go to directory for that many brokers. Um, so that was a big one, but. That said, again, we were part of the first cohort of the Lloyd's Lab, uh, which was a real honour, you know, to be, to be chosen to go to Lloyd's Lab. It's good to become a, one of the first cohort I thought was a little bit of an extra sort of uh, yeah, tick box on our, uh, on our achievements. So, yeah, they, those two are big, but again, you know, we've, we've had some great achievements just with our you know, individual clients. You know, our, uh, we had a company come on and within the space of two weeks, we had five or six inquiries come through they wouldn't have seen otherwise. So, you know, the, the achievements for me are more sort of what we're doing for the people on the platform as opposed to what we've achieved in getting people onto the platform. But, mm. yeah, there's, there's been a number of uh, good achievements along the way. But I'll counter that. We've been, there's, a, there's been ups and downs like, as per every starter. As with every good business, yeah, absolutely. Well, so, exactly. What does your typical or ideal customer look like in terms of profile? Of course. So, I mean, we have a many. Obviously, we spread ourselves across sort of the whole market. We do want to get everybody involved. But really, if you're an MGA and you are looking to either launch a new product or reach out to a wider broker network, you can come onto our platform for free, set up a product, and instantly get that out to a wider distribution network. So for us core market is yeah the the mgas the um, insurers who are really looking to get their products out to a, to a new market um, or even just those who are looking to better inform the brokers currently of what they are doing i mean but obviously again on the flip side any wholesale broker or retail broker who's really looking for new capacity who might be just wanting to see what else is out there in their class of business or have specific risks that they're just struggling to see who does it or who'd be willing to look at it um you know that's where we come in that's where we help fantastic 
And this is the uh, the killer question, the horrible job interview question that everyone has to ask and nobody likes being asked. Um, so question five is, what's the biggest weakness in your offering right now? Of course, but I mean, like any network or, or directory, we, we're, we're restricted by the number of users and we rely heavily on critical mass. You know, when I built the platform, um, it, was, it was an empty platform uh, until MJs and insurers come in and start populating their products and populating their information. There's obviously very little value uh, mm. for the brokers. Now, we're getting to the point where we're getting over that critical mass. We've got over 270 products now being advertised on the platform. But for me, the more, the more content we have, the more value there is in our platform. And that's the hardest drive for you. You know, obviously, when you're trying to sell something, but you rely on other people filling it in to sell it. I mean, again, it's like having the first telephone. It's you know, being the first person on LinkedIn. You know, you're trying to sell the value and the value might not be there, but the value is in the network itself and in the critical mass of people um, logging in and using. But yeah, so that's an issue we've been, um, we've been faced, especially in the early doors. We're now just coming to terms with and uh, just about getting over. Fantastic stuff. So now we're going to move on to the quick fire round. These are 10 questions for which we need your instinctive answers. Now I warn you, Peter, are you strapped in and ready for this round? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. Question number one, InsureTech with or without an E? I'd always go without an E. You know, I think if we're going along the lines of FinTech, InsureTech, it just uh, seems like a better sort of adjustment to me. But you know what? It's, it, it's not something I'm going to get into an argument with someone about if I can avoid it. <laughs> Bieber or Broker Expo as an event? Different. Um, Bieber for me, for the pure fed, you know, we've, we've done Bieber a number of years. We've gone big there. And you know, Bieber is a lot more um, when you're new, you can make some noise. Uh, I think Broker Expo is very much, you know, it's a lot more about the business. It's more about coming in. You, know, you have things you want to get done. You know that people are going to be there. And you're beelining it. You know, it's less of a browsing type of um, type of event. But uh, we've attended both. We've had great fun at both, and uh, we will be attending both when they're back on as well. Um, like, but yeah, like for me, I think uh, Bieber goes more towards the. Um, it's more of a celebration of insurance and broking, uh, yeah. whereas the broker expo is more of a business event. You know, that's what I say. I think that's a really good summary of the two. That's exactly how I would uh, I would put it as well. Um, question three: I iOS or Android? Uh, Android for me every day of the week. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a picked up my mum's iPhone every day and realised I can't use an iPhone. You know, <laughs> I, I could I a lot of things. So, you know, I think there's much of a muchness when building. I mean, obviously, when you're building uh, apps, um, when you're looking to deploy on iOS, it is a lot more difficult because they go through far more rigorous testing on every um, release that you do before it goes on the app. So let's say mm -hmm. I did a, a minor change on Android, I can push that straight on straight to live. Whereas mm -hmm. on iOS, I've got to push it to them, wait three to four days while they have a look at it, and then get on. So obviously, when you're working in a startup, speed is key, and being able to do small iterations and, and grow the platform is important. So that did uh, inhibit us a little bit, hence my yeah, alliance to the Android as opposed to the iOS if possible. Fantastic. Um, question four, greatest film ever made? Oh, Gladiator. <laughs> Good choice. Uh, Twitter <laughs> or LinkedIn? Uh, Twitter or LinkedIn? Oh, I'm LinkedIn all the way. Uh, yeah, favorite... I'm not big on Twitter. Um, go on. Go on. Uh, favorite other in SureTech? Oh, oh, that's a hard one. Um, there are a the number spot, up there right? I've got a lot of respect for, a lot of time for. I mean, I, I prefer not to. I mean, it depends. There are so many different areas that they're coming into. It's very hard to compare like for like. You know, you've got people yeah. doing phenomenal things and sort of ma mapping out NatCat and you know, better predicting hurricane seasons to you know, people who've got phenomenal front ends for the end user to pick up and you know, have a wallet of, of insurance in, on their iPhone. So to try to compare which one's better or which one's more useful. I, I just couldn't do it. But um, I can name a couple that I like a lot. I mean, Reg UK is one. Um, you've got... Um, uh, relay platforms, brilliant. White Space is obviously doing 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 a lot of things as well. Um, I, mean, I, I could go on and list a hundred, but uh, I say wow. they're all brilliant. That, they're all doing work. well. And we'll that move, the full, move the market forward. So uh, anyone who's trying to do that, they got my thumbs up from me. That works for me. Uh, greatest sports person in history. Oh wow! Um, God, that's pretty much. I mean, Johnny Wilkinson's always been uh, sort of a hero of mine I think he's a god to every English kid who watched that uh, 2003 World Cup um, so yeah I'll, I'll stick with the uh, Johnny Wilkinson but Jason Leonard 
Lauren Fenerian on the same pole as well. You know, part of that team. Fantastic. Um, early bird or night owl? I'm definitely a night owl. Um, you'll often find me pinging out emails at 11, 12 o'clock and you'll see me, yeah, a bit bleary eyed at your nine o'clock Zoom <laughs> meeting. So <laughs> I'll definitely say a night owl on that. Yeah. Uh, Zoom or Teams? Teams, um, purely because I was told I had to use it by uh, my operations lady. So I'll, I'll do what she says. <laughs> and just use Teams, apparently it's easier if we just use one system. So yeah, always do I, what I I'll say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and your last, your last quick fire question at your most visited website. I mean, at the moment, it probably has to be LinkedIn. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's my job. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it's to get us out there, make sure I'm keeping track of the market and making sure I'm not getting in. Obviously, be on my own platform. Um, but yeah, so LinkedIn's my sort of go-to first thing in the morning. Have a browse through that. You would, you would have got bonus points for saying evermoredigital.com, but you know, oh. I'll let you off, you know. <laughs> Peter, thank you. You've been a great sport. Thanks so much for being our first guest. Um, for those wanting to find out more about Insuracore, insuracore.com has all of the answers. Visit that today to sign up for free um, or request a demo with this man. Uh, if you enjoyed today's Vendor Spotlight, make sure to subscribe to evermoredigital.com as we bring you the latest in insurance news, views, and reviews. Please add your comments, likes, and subscribe to the channel. Share to your boss, share to your nan, share with your window cleaner. But for now, sadly, it's goodbye from Peter Insurecore, and it's goodbye from me. Bye. Bye.